we had the Dairy Queen, but you know, it was Texas. Now, I've heard tales and legends of the past, and there's a Taco Bell in my town. It lasted a whole two months. <laughs> that was a bygone era. We are live. We're live. Welcome, friends. This is the Heroes Era. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Um, I'm your Dungeon Master, Ben, and with me tonight, I have Chris as Jules. Good evening. Joel, <coughs> Joel <laughs> I don't know as, what that was. <laughs> as Mordecai. Let's cast some spells. Don't name mine until he like shows up. I want him to be a mystery. Fair What's enough. That? I might cast a spell on you. Arctic <laughs> Wolf as Yoshi Ruki. Good evening. And Mitch will be joining us as well, and his character will be revealed in a little bit here. Oh. So, um, I hope everybody's doing well, and we are playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. And tonight we are telling a story, but we do not yet know how it will go. The players, the dungeon master, the dice, all of these will have a hand in how the game unfolds. This is the hero's era. And I usually um, do a drum thing, I wanted to change it up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bodie will be back with us next week. He's got something going on tonight. Um, so last oh, game yeah. we um, kind of uh, ran into a bit of a debacle trying to scale a frozen cliffside and avoid a hungry uh, flock of griffin. Um, you all did end up make it uh, end up making it up safely and in one piece. But it was something of a close call, um, and there was definitely danger involved. Of course, there was a little bit of a, uh, well, a kerfuffle with our, our hit points calculation. So. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for that, Arctic Wolf. Um, but I think we have that sorted out, and uh, we're ready to continue here. Um, again, The you all have just reached this new con or Actually, I guess it would only be fair to say that two of you without Bodhi here, but... Uh, Jules and Mordecai, if you reach this new continent, uh, it seems to be something of a frozen world uh, still being revealed. And uh, <clears throat> you've been asked by Brahms, somebody who broke you out of prison, to uh, meet him in Trikeshnia. And so that's where you're traveling to. And you've met uh, Yoshi Ruki, who seems to have some kind of... Uh, project or experiment planned uh, back in the city and Yoshiruki was waiting for Commander Brahms uh, who he expected to be traveling with you but so we'll begin this game um, as you all are ushered into the train station uh, at the peak of this steep slope um, above the undertow tavern and uh, dwarves have welcomed you, and they also have crossbows that they're wielding and looking for any griffin that might get too near. Hey, we saw you climbing, getting tossed about like a rat in a chicken coop. Did a fine job of scaring the griffin. Well, don't be shy. You're, you're safe now, you're safe now. He kind of goes over to Yoshiruki and smacks him on the shoulder. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, our, our friend's been through it here. You think we might could maybe sit down for a minute, have a rest? Maybe a drink? Uh, of course. Yeah, join us, you know. We got drinks, plenty of drinks. We've been cooped up all day. I wouldn't mind hearing a story. Is that, <laughs> is that Mr. Yoshiruki? Another dwarf yeah. approaches. Oh. Oh. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, you know, do you happen to be taking the rail back to Trikeshnia? Yeah, that's the plan. Ah, uh, well, you. Uh, you know, if you go, and he kind of gestures over his shoulder, would you mind bringing these machines back with you? Uh, I know Commander Plaz is waiting for them. Um. The transport contract pays 250 gold, 50 for each of these things. 
Uh, I already got half up front. But you can keep the balance. All right, not bad. What Should. do you say, guys? Yeah, we're we're already heading in that direction. We might as well. Very well. Oh, perfect. There's a few other carts over there, too, you can just borrow. Uh, but, anyways, join us for some drinks. Rest up. Sounds good. Yeah. How, how, how long till the, uh, till the rail comes through? How much time we got? Oh, well, <clears throat> yeah, see, this is like um, a rail, but you're going to be the train, so to speak. They're hand-powered carts. Just get on. Nice straight uh, flat shot to try catching you though. We'll cool. Get you there much good. quicker. Good, 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 good. Yeah, you know, oh, take a little okay. bit of work, but uh, so there's no, than there's no. Walking. I gotcha. So we no, just go. There's no, there's no steam engine. No. Not yet. No, no, no. Fair enough. <laughs> no, I mean we've heard of them. We're working on one, but um, <laughs> can't get it figured out. Anyways. And so you can join the, the dwarves for their game and for libations, if you please. And uh, this can be a short rest. You can spend your hit dice to recover. Why don't you do that? I, I'm down by quite a bit. I'm actually not bad. Surprisingly, for once. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Must be nice. <clears throat> and so, uh, this station is nestled into the steep sloped cliffs and fortified with what look like slabs of iron, varying from the size of tower shields to the size of large doors. And these have been arranged to form a wall, protecting the station from the open tundra. And the rail system is built upon large logs planted firmly in the ice and snow. The rail itself is made from long ties of metal. The landscape reaching out is flat, like the surface of a table, uh, with just rocks or trees jutting out of the plain. And the rail stretches into the distance, following a long frozen valley with the mountains to the north. Uh, so, DM? Yes. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use... Uh... Uh, one of my Eldritch Invocations uh, to roll max on my hit dice. Okay, very good. And I'm, and I, and I'm going nice. to go ahead and use two hit dice to fill myself back up to full. Okay. God, I love Warlocks. <laughs> Warlocks are my favorite class. They're pretty fun. They're mine too. I love playing warlocks. <clears throat> There's just so much, and you always end up just casting Eldritch Blast. It's my favorite spell. <clears throat> I mean, Eldritch Blast is great, um, but you know, it's 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 the all the invocations and the boons and everything. Like it's so, it's such a customizable class. You can pretty much build almost anything out of a, out of a warlock. And I say it: warlocks are a good class. And all you warlock haters out there, at me, and I I'm will. I'm not a warlock hater. Everyone hates on rangers and monks. Everyone hates on, and you know what? You know what? Ranger haters, you're wrong too. They are people. People that hate rangers and warlocks. I'm gonna say this is a hot take. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna. I got. I got hijacked this for one second. Rangers, and warlock haters. You know what the problem is? You don't know how to build or play the class. That's why. Because if you don't. They're not a plug and play like the other one. There's a lot of there's a lot of classes where you can kind of jump in there, and even if you don't, you don't know how mm -hmm. to like min max it or anything like that, but you can still build a pretty strong thing. Warlocks and rangers, I think warlocks especially, if you don't build them properly, you can very easily build just a a, a broken garbage thing that will do nothing. But if you build it right, okay. And I'm also, done. it's I'm still, still trying to really, figure it really out. hard to build a warlock wrong. Like, I remember my first character was a warlock, and I didn't take Eldritch Blast. I used Firebolt on everything. Yeah, that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You want to know something funny? Uh, I, I know everybody uses Hex. I have Hex as a spell. I haven't used it once. 
Yeah. I mean, Hex is great and everything, but like, yeah, it's not necessary. Even Eldritch Blast is not. And the other thing with that, too, everyone's like, oh, you're going to play a Warlock, you're just going to Eldritch Blast every time. Yeah, after the fighter takes 17 attacks, and then attacks again, and then attacks again, and then attacks again, yes, I'm going to use the same spell twice. Relax. Get off my back. Okay, now I'm done. Guys, <laughs> get off Chris's <laughs> back, all right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, <clears throat> I think we have a good idea of where you stand on that on that issue. <laughs> 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 there is no bad class. Play whatever you want to have fun with. And so uh, the dwarves are happy to make, you know, small talk. They're interested in rumors. Um, but is when you all are ready, I'm also ready to move forward. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we really have a... I mean, um, Jules will probably just do his usual thing of... of you know, schmoozing with the locals, probably play a few games with the dwarves, have a couple drinks, you know, um, gather any sort of like, try to kind of get just some basic information of like any, any possible threats we might run into on, on the rails or anything like that, you know, any types of potential hazards that we should maybe be on the lookout for. Ah, well, we got some um, guys working out there on the tracks. If you see them, uh, send them back home. Wicked storms come in. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. yeah, well, yeah you know. might want to hurry through because of that storm. I was just going to say, so how, how soon are you expecting this storm? Uh, probably on set midday tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so we do need to probably... How, how long is the is the journey we're going to be making? A couple of days. Might make it there before the storm. Yeah, we should probably get going pretty soon, guys. I don't want to get stuck in the middle of that. Yeah, sounds bad. Let's go. And so, unless there's anything else, um, the adventure. Um, are we are we properly equipped for the cold weather? Do we need jackets or anything? Do we need to get some coats or anything like that? It is cold, uh, cold enough for there to be snow. Yeah. Um, I'll turn back to the dwarves. Um, any of you guys? Is there like a a, a trading post or something here and get, get some furs or, or a, a, you know something to protect us from the elements out there? I got some furs. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'd, I'd be happy to pay you for them. If we yeah, could, yeah they're get some ready fur. to be worn like cloaks. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so I guess we need uh, there's there's four of just the four of us right now, right? Yeah. So. I want five silver each. Okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, Reynold, you, you can cover that, right? I'll cover it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I'll, I'll, that's, that's only, what is that, two gold? I'll, I'll, I'll pitch it in. I got this one, guys. Thank you. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, bundle up and, um, I guess we go ahead and just hit the trail. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And like I said, the landscape is flat, like the surface of a table with rocks or trees jutting out of the plain. The rail stretches into the distance, following a long frozen valley with mountains to the north. Uh, that would be along the right side of the track. To the left is a seemingly endless expanse of snow, disappearing in the distant downfall of sleet and rain many miles away. And Reynold steps up to the mechanism that operates the cart. <clears throat> and begins to uh, operate the one of them. Now, who is riding with Reynold? There's going to be two carts for people and then the single cart, um, you know, towing the machine parts. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I suppose I'd probably ride with uh, with Reynold. Right, then Mordecai and... Um, Yoshiruki are good to operate the other cart? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you all <clears throat> please just make strength checks for me? <laughs> oh, no. DM, if I see that I have to uh, power oh. this cart, is there is there a way where I could summon my skeleton buddy to do this for me? Is there enough room on this platform for the three of us? Ah, uh, there is. 
I will summon my skeleton buddy. He has more strength than I do. <clears throat> okay. Well, I didn't roll super great, but I'm also on the cart with Reynald, and he's 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 our he's our strong man. So I'm kind of hoping that he can help us with that. I got a I got a three. I got a four. <laughs> so, so our skeleton buddy uh, rolls at a plus one, which is still two higher than me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And your skeleton's name is Bucky, right? That is correct. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Bucky comes through with the seventeen. Oh wow! Uh, Reynolds looking at an eight, and then we have a four, three, and a f- yeah. Um, it's slow going. Uh, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to roll Reynolds again though, because you rolled a strength saving throw. You said it was a strength check. How do I? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to click. <laughs> I'm just a rookie here. Oh, much there better. There it is. 21. Yeah. <laughs> That's a roll for the right thing. Um, Reynolds' strength only comes through when his life doesn't depend on it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I, honestly, for his character, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> so Reynolds and Bucky pick up the, uh, you know, the lion's share of the work. Is that a? A saying that works there? I don't know. I'm not really sure what that even means. A lion's share? The bigger? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Here's the way I figure it. Reynold got a 21. I got an 8. I mean, our cart is averaging a 15. So, you know. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so... Um, <laughs> after um, a couple of hours of travel... You do feel quite exhausted. Um, it was much easier to ca- to uh, impose exhaustion when you had all kind of failed, but now things are different. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yoshiruki and Jules, you'll suffer from uh, one level of exhaustion. Ah, all right. <laughs> oh man. Um, sorry, uh, I'm trying to look up the first on level. Disadvantage checks, right? Ability checks, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, it is cold out, um, but... You know, from time to time as you stop, the air feels uh, unnaturally still, so there are no icy winds. And the sky above is a muted green color with golden rays reaching from far away. Uh, after a couple of hours of travel, the uh, snow beneath the rails um, and the carts becomes slushy, and the wood beams begin to sink into the snow, um, almost floating amidst this slush. Yoshiruki, you pass this area on the way in. Um, it's the same as it was on the way here. Uh, and the carts seem to be made of light material, supported easily by these wood beams beneath the rails. Um, however... The carts are uh, much less stable as you continue forward. So if that makes sense, the rail had been kind of fixed and planted into the snow. And uh, now it seems to just, you know, be uh, quite melted beneath the rails. Yeah. Um, after you have made some way, uh, cargo on the cart that you're towing begins to shift as water sloshes onto the various carts. And one of the heavy machines shifts and the rear cart uh, begins to tip. You're going to need to do something or the entire load will be uh, lost in the icy waters and perhaps the cart that's towing it will be pulled in as well. Will you all roll initiative, please? Um... Do we have, because initiative is a check, so do we have a disadvantage on that? Oh, I'm afraid so. Yeah, crap. What a wicked world. Oh, disadvantage then. Oh, jeez. Oh, it, won't, it won't do it automatically. I got to roll twice. Okay, so I got a 14. I got a 9. Uh, 
but this is kind of an urgent thing. So I want to add a, um, I'm going to add a psychic die to my, to my initiative check. Okay. I only got a two. So bump it up to a 16. Okay. Jules, you will act first. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh, I'm sorry. I missed <clears throat> Jules uh, at 18. Oh, my apologies. Uh, Joel, you'll act first. Mordecai. Okay, I don't have much I can do here. Uh, I see it tilting right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's been um, kind of a precarious trip after reaching this landscape. And, uh, you know, you've been keeping your eye on the cargo, but then suddenly uh, it's gone astray here. Okay. There's not much I can do here. But there is something. Um, I'm just looking at my spells one second, please. Okay. Um, okay, I don't have that spell. In that case, the only thing I can do is try to jump on the side that's lifted to try to bring it back down. Encounter the weight. Okay. Um, would you like to make a um, acrobatics check to try to land precisely where you mean to? I will Just gladly do that. Kind of stick the landing. <coughs> okay, with a 13. And then after Joel is Jules. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Jules is going to do the same thing. He's going to hop back from the from the, the front cart and rush back there, uh, <clears throat> landing on the, the side that's lifting up, and then grab, like, I'm assuming these, this stuff is, like, strapped down with some, some sort of rope or something. That makes sense. On to, like, tied down to the cart. Yeah. So he's going to get, but instead of just standing on the, like like on the edge of the cart, he's gonna actually be on the side of it and grab the rope and like fully lean back. You know, like the old, those little, I don't know what they're called, but like those those like little boats that people are on, where like they turn them and they like have to hang, kind of hang off the side to like anchor it back around. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that kind of that kind of thing. So he's gonna rub, just grab that and he's just like fully like vertical off of the the side, just lean back with the rope. Okay. Um, this does feel like an athletics check to me, but it's also a rope trick, so could be a dexterity check. Okay. I'm not um, sure if it would, would constitute acrobatics, it, yeah. but. Okay. I mean, I'll take a, I'll take a straight dex check over athletics anyway. Okay. I do still have disadvantage though, cause I am exhausted. See how that does. Okay, um, that's a fourteen. Um, I will throw a psychic die on there if I need to. If that's a fail. Um, <clears throat> you feel as though um, you're making a good um, impact on the situation. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be right back. I'm having a problem with the. Headphones connecting, so okay. I'm gonna switch up some things around. And Reynold reaches from the cart uh, that he's in and tries to just physically stabilize um, the other cart uh, within the athletics check here, almost like he's wrestling it. A seventeen from Reynold. And then uh, Yoshiruki. Um. So is the uh, cargo strapped down? It is strapped down, although it seems to be coming loose a bit. Um, however, Jules is, uh, you know, seemingly uh, tightening the load as he makes his efforts. Okay. Um. I'll use my rope of climbing and have, I'll command the rope of climbing to tighten down on the uh, loosening cargo. Oh, very nice. Uh, will you, for me, um, 
yeah that's a that's a good a good attempt there that, that I would qualify that as essentially a success um, and so as Jewel struggles to um, you know write this cart at the same time <clears throat> tightening the ropes and you add yet another layer of ropes and secure the cargo uh, helping Jules in in his efforts and Joel easily and nimbly uh, lands exactly uh, or I'm sorry I keep calling Mordecai Joel <laughs> I do it so much Mordecai lands <laughs> nimbly uh, exactly where he chooses and you write the cart um, and it seems as though you've stabilized it enough to make your way forward um, but something catches your interest here um, because the water seems to have cleaned off something that looks like uh, it, it looked at one point like a large bolt <clears throat> uh, jewels you might notice this at your feet uh, but now it's revealed to be a gemstone cleaned by these icy waters and the object that had shifted the cart uh, sits before you almost staring at you uh, with what looks like a slot that will perfectly fit the stone that you've just discovered. And you can make um, perception or arcana checks as you please, <laughs> if you like. That's going to be perception all day. Still with disadvantage, though. But that's all right. Uh, 11? Okay. And um, Mordecai, if you wish, you can make an Arcana check, and the same with Yoshiruki. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Awesome. Arcana. Okay. So, yeah, um, I... Is it possible for him to hand me the gem? You ask Jules to hand it to you. Yeah, I mean, I think Chris's camera is look at cutting it? out now. Um. Oh, sorry, I can hear you though. I hear you now. Sorry, can you, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it called. Okay. Out. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> my, you know, my work computer does weird stuff sometimes. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll grab it and 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 sort of hold it out and hand it hand it over to to um. I'm sorry, I forgot your character's name again. Yoshiruka. Yoshiruka. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh. All right. So now that I have it in my hand, I'm gonna cast identify. Can I do that? Yes, you can. This um, appears to be magical in the sense that it is a component of a larger piece of magic or a larger magical item. And you recognize that this is a uh, moonstone. And um, Mordecai, with your knowledge of Arcana, you recognize uh, after this, these like um, you know humps of or hunks of metal have been sort of cleaned by the uh, by the ocean water. You recognize these as um, war forged uh, creatures forged for battle, uh, sentient beings, but mechanical. And you recognize that the moonstone that uh, Yoshiruke holds uh, would essentially be the, the mind or the power, the essence of one of these. Uh, do I know if we're moving towards some sort of uh, front line? I'm sorry, I disconnected for like seven seconds maybe there. You're okay. Um, as far as moving towards the front line, um, 
you would know that this continent would be uh, much more hostile than on Thuld, still challenged by dragons and giants. Uh, I would share my knowledge uh, with my party members. <clears throat> okay. So okay. some sort of like a automaton that they're just shipping to the to help with these incursions, these dragon and giant incursions. Uh, they are they're sentient machinery of war. They are thinking creatures made of metal and steel. That seems to be a group of them here on this rail cart. Okay. I mean, I seems fine to me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you you hold a soul in your hand. But like, was this a soul? I mean, I feel it feels weird just holding on to it. I guess like that they're powered down like that. But you know, honestly, if I could power down for this journey and you just wake me up when I get when we get there, I'd be okay with that. So I don't think we're really doing anything bad here. Um, You know, I don't know. Uh, it's it's weird, I guess. Where where are these things going to again? Uh, uh, Yoshi Yoshimaru, where 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 are we taking this stuff again? Um, I believe we're taking this stuff inland to uh, yes, to try. City. I think we're supposed to drop them off to try Keshnia to be delivered to Commander Plaz. Commander uh, Plaz. yes. Okay. And you have worked you know, with them. Okay, so you know, you know, Plaz is he. On the up, is he not a psycho? <laughs> um, unfortunately, I do not know the guy that well, so okay, I couldn't really say. I don't know. I mean, what do you, what do you guys? How do you feel about it? Well, it's a shame. What I wouldn't give for a workforce like this. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, if they, they, I don't know. Maybe we should just keep pumping the cart and get out of here before, uh, before, hey, we, uh, it up before we get stuck in that storm. You think they notice one missing? How many are there? Five. Yeah, they would notice one missing. That's 20% of their inventory. That's called the, the cost of doing business. <laughs> I mean, you'd yeah. have to at least go with a, like, one of them fell off the cart into the murky waters, then we couldn't recover it kind of story. Instead of just being like, oh, here's four. Whoops. You know. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to? You want to? Do you want to turn one on and see see how they feel about it? Um, I don't know what our chances would be against an automaton of this nature. It should it turn aggressive? Okay, so let's Back continue on, on our way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just get out of here before it before this weather gets any worse. And as you move to turn and continue making your way up the rail, uh, Yoshiruki, you hold the moonstone, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, you turn and uh, this card is most unstable and you actually slip. The stone spills out of your hand and into the perfect slot that seems to be have been shaped for this stone. And luck would have it. And there it goes, and it slides into what would be the head of this thing that clicks close and forms something of a hideous face. Ah, oh, jeez. If you would, Mitch, uh, you regain consciousness. Hello, and congratulations on powering up your Mr. Misfit model, model 301. <laughs> Use a function. Sail. Soldier. <laughs> Or bodyguard. 
I'll take bodyguard. 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 All allies, please line up in front of Mr. Misfit so he may identify you. <laughs> okay. I guess we, we line up. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> The glass is on him, one side bright pink and one side just a, what was it? Was it bright yellow or bright blue? Bright blue. It's blue behind you. They light up and you can see the lights. They're just like scanning you guys, identifying you. Mr. Misfit, ready for a service. Hello there. So uh, what seems to be the problem? And he's all shiny. His suit, he starts moving. One arm's stuck like this. It doesn't move. It's just stuck like this. I'm sorry. The other arm, he can move however he wants. <laughs> that was his Mr. Legs are stiff with wheels on the bottom of his feet, and he has a hinge at his hip so he can move. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, that was uh, um, Mr. Mr. Misfit? Is that was, what? Did I catch that? Mr. Misfit. Mr. Misfit. Okay. Um, well, hi. Hello. Um, quick question. Uh, I know we picked like bodyguard mode. Are you able, to, like, like if down the road we needed to adjust that, can you shift into a different mode if needed to? Or are you bodyguard now? Like we're locked in to that. You would have to pull my my gem out and put it back in, but it's a okay. A is that you put it in? It splits up. It, all these little guys. Yeah, it goes. How in. is that for you? Getting the gem pulled out is that weird for you? Is that does it hurt? Does it or do you just like go to sleep? Yeah, what's well, it like when you get jacked uh, off? <laughs> well, I don't exist, and then I do. Seems like a fun okay. experience. I'm going to say, so like sleep. We're going to roll with that. Okay. okay. Um, great. Well, I guess um, you want to help us push the cart? You want to help help roll this thing out, I guess? Guys, I don't know what to do with this thing. <laughs> yeah, let's I'm have designed it for many steer. functions. Okay. I'm gonna, well, I'll tell you I'm what. This will be... Yeah, why don't you help with the moving the cart and I'll okay, we need to keep an eye keep a closer eye on this 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 cargo so um keeping it balanced and stuff so we'll watch that uh I don't know what to do with this yeah let's just let's just let's just keep going I'm gonna go into manager mode <laughs> <laughs> get on come on more to guys you don't do guys putting on a tie here. <laughs> and it's like one of those old pump carts, right? Where there's a handle on each side. Yeah. He's You've been here six months. I'm this close to firing move. it. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> how does uh, Mitch always, every time you show up, you bring a character that just, I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's a talent. The wild imagination. <laughs> I'm sorry to force the hand with the gemstone, oh. but uh, I just wanted to make sure Mitch didn't. It's all right. We were already on a railroad, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, as uh, your group continues, the ground becomes solid again, <clears throat> and much of the day has passed uh, when you see a large group. Um, of beasts ahead in the distance. You can all make perception checks if you wish. Very well. Hey, 27 with disadvantage. Four. 18. Two. Let's go. <laughs> and you see... Uh, this is a herd of mammoth. And they seem to be blocking the tracks ahead. Hey guys, slow down, slow down. We need to stop. Oh. Um, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Miss 
Mr. Mister, uh, cut the cut the brakes for a second. We got a got some mammoths in the way. Stop stumping. Just looking over at you. Lights look like a deer reflecting. <laughs> <clears throat> Is there so they're 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 blocking the uh, uh, tracks? Yeah, they might be a half mile ahead. Um, okay, and you'll have to go through them somehow. <clears throat> uh, hey, uh, Mordecai, you think maybe like when we get as we get up close enough for you, you could maybe give the ones on on the track a little just a little zap on the rear end and. Get them moving. How much of the track are they taking? Uh, are they covering? Um, it looks like there's a few that are directly over the track, and there's a large number of these beasts. At least twenty. I don't know if I have anything that big. I'm not looking for anything. I don't want you to 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 to. Well, actually, actually, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, wait, I'm just actually. saying, <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no. Uh, I just want to give us something, some, just a slap on the ass so they'll move. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Oh, I might have God, something that fireball them. I'm, I'm just going to make them a little uncomfortable. Mr. Misfit model 301 is ill-equipped for physical confrontation. Oh, I lack defensive <laughs> modifications. Then why is bodyguard an option? <laughs> this is going so well. <laughs> Unauthorized modifications have been made since the origin of Mr. Misfit. Great. You know what, Mordecai? You do what you're going to do, man. I'm too tired to fight with all this. <laughs> And uh, so. Jules is just kind of kind of step back and just just nervously apparate and and disapparate a blade. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> okay. So once we're 120 feet away, uh, I would like to cast one of my more powerful spells currently. Okay, and uh, so it... you approach and just mo uh, briefly. Um, as you do so to get into range for your magic, you uh, see what you thought was a cluster of rocks, but it is actually a rail cart that has been overturned. Oh. Are they surrounding it? This is still um, a short distance. Like, uh, had you said 150 feet? 120 feet. 120. So this is within perhaps 200 feet of where the herd of mammoths stand. And you also see tools surrounding the cart strewn about in the snow. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Stop, 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 stop. I want to hop off and, and take a look at the the overturned cart and see if there's anything of, va anything of use or value on there. And it, also if there's any um, indicator of whomever was driving it, you know, like footprints leading, leading away or... Anything of that nature. Okay. Uh, will you please make an investigation check? Uh, yes. Not nearly as good as my perception, but that's okay. It's an eight. Not good. Here, I'll throw a... I'll throw a psychic die on that. Okay, well, it's an, it's an eight. <laughs> um, you notice that all of the tools have been broken. You don't find really anything of value. Does it look like it's been there for a while? Um, it's hard to say. All right, guys. This looks like it's all junk, and I don't see any any trace of whomever was here. So, 
I don't know what we're supposed to do with this. Just get it out of the way and move on. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um. Hey, uh, uh, Mister, Mister Misfit Three, O. You, <laughs> you come help it. Help me. Hello. Help us move this stuff, please. Yes, I'm on my way. The wheels over there. <laughs> the rail cart is surprisingly light, and the group of you can move it out of the way. And so you continue forward to where you uh, wish to cast your spell from. Mordecai, um, you suspect that your magic would take the effect that you desire from this point. What do you wish to do? I'm going to cast a spell I haven't cast yet. Uh, it's a beautiful little thing called Sickening Radiance. Are you casting okay, this on okay. the mammoth? With what? You're casting this on the mammoths? Correct. And so what happens when you cast this spell? Uh, this spell creates, within 120 feet range, a 30-foot radius sphere of uh, green light. Uh, when a creature moves into the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. That creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 40 10 radiant damage and suffer one level of exhaustion. Uh, okay. It emits, it emits uh, light within five feet and uh, makes it impossible for creatures to benefit from invisibility. And so I suspect you're targeting this um, or centering this on where it will affect some of the mammoths who are blocking the the rail. That is obviously. correct. I'm trying to I'm just trying to make it uncomfortable so they move away. And um th uh, <clears throat> the DC on this is 17. There's a group of them uh, clustered and you're able to target uh four of them. Uh, I think actually six. I'm sorry. I'll give you two more here. And one of them stands amidst this spreading green uh, dim light, just uh, plus. Non plus means like the opposite of what you would think it means, right? Um, anyways. And the rest of them, however, begin to uh, kind of retch and uh, look about themselves, seeing this light and. Um, it seems to go into a bit of a frenzy and charge in random directions. Are any of them charging at us? Well, as two of them kind of break off in your direction, there's another cluster to the right of them that join them in their stampede, uh, charging, indeed, your way, straight down the rails towards your carts. Oh, Do you time to react? Just like <laughs> yes. I planned. Will everybody please roll initiative? Damn. <laughs> I might even get sent to the turn tracker because I'm not. I don't have a token on the board. I could add that now. <clears throat> okay, so I got a I got a 23 with uh, disadvantage. 15 with disadvantage. Nine. 16. And this is the site before you, some distance ahead, about 120 feet or so. Um, That's a lot of mammoths. What do we do? And so oh the group of these is running your way, uh, roughly a third of the ones pictured. Um, and if you don't move out of the way, they're going to trample you and your carts. And we'll we will start with um, Jules. Okay. 
Just double checking one thing here real quick to see if that, what I want to do will work. I'm going to reach on under my freshly purchased furs onto my uh, robe of useful items. I'm going to pull a patch off of it. I'm going to jump back up to the front cart and I'm going to throw the patch out in front of me and hope that this deters them away from me. And I'm going to, as the patch flies into the air, it's going to kind of rip into two pieces. And as they, as they fall to the ground, it's going to grow and start to form into something. And by the time they reach the ground, two mastiffs land um, facing these these um, uh, um, um, other things that are on the floor. <laughs> the mammoths. My brain stopped. The mammoths. Yes. Sorry. My brain stopped working for a second. It's all right. I was going to let like, you struggle. Big, big, hairy <laughs> elephants. <laughs> So I'm going to throw them out, and hopefully, like, the Mastiffs will start barking and running and, and, and just just spook them enough to, to get them to veer to one side. Okay. Um, when you summon these Mastiffs, do you have any control over them? Or they're just beasts that have been summoned. Nope. Okay. <laughs> they're just beasts that have been summoned. I will, I will, I will like, summon them, and then... Um, um, if I can just take, because I have a, a, a burglar's pack, which has uh, some ball bearings in it. So I'd like summon them and like just take a fistful of ball bearings and just throw them at the, at the, at the back of the dogs, just to, to not to, not to like hit them with them, but like throw it like behind them to like, like startle them the same way you'd, you startle know, them in that direction. Yeah, yeah, the same way you'd sure. spur a horse, you know, the same concept. Sure, it would make a strange sound behind them, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, the the you know, just trying to just just get them moving in that direction and and making some noise, just to to spook away these uh, these mammoths. Sure. Or at least and at least veer them off away from the track. This is a sizable portion of the herd charging your way. Next is Mordecai. Uh, you said they're 120 feet away from us. Give or take, yes. Uh, in that case, I'm going to try to Eldritch Blast to see if I can push them back into the area of effect of my spell. Okay. Do I need to roll initiative for the Mastiffs? Uh, yes, please. I put them directly after you, but they probably have their own initiative. Yeah, it doesn't really... I was looking on the... the... Let's leave them right after you for ease of uh, initiative order. Okay. 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 I have them running forward towards the Mammoth. Yeah, because the 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 description for the robe it doesn't have any clarification on like any of these creatures as far as like initiative or anything like that. Sure, uh, nineteen and a twenty-one will hit. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So it's a six and an eight, and they're pushed back ten feet. Okay. And you push them back into this kind of strange dim green light that is causing them uh, sickness. That's correct. Okay. So that, that means they're taking, well, they took 48 and now they're going to take another 48. Okay. Will you roll the 48 for me? Okay. Okay, and then uh, we'll have you all for Mortify, uh, Mordecai. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay, then Yoshi Ruki. Um, I'm going to take the patch with Mastiffs off of my robe of uh, my um, robe of useful items. 
Okay. And I'm just going to toss it as far as I can. Okay. Throwing two more dogs out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, am I still at disadvantage? Uh, you would be on checks. I, I don't think that a check would be required for this. So okay. you're, you're able to do that. Um, do you take any measures to spur them on as Jules had? Um, I'm stretching it a little bit and just qualifying it as kind of like an object interaction, even though you're technically like kind of throwing something. It's, you know, if you wish to take some kind of measure to direct the dogs, though, then you would want to do so now. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast Vomiturgy. And, uh, Gonna cast it like as close as the map that I can get to, like up to like thirty feet. Okay. And I'm just gonna have my voice boom up from that location. Okay. This is loud as it can be. All right. And try and like startle them. Very good. And um, the two dogs that you have uh, summoned join the other two dogs, and they begin uh, running in the direction of these massive you know, inspired by their growing numbers. Uh, af after Yoshiruki is Misfit. Mr. Misfit. Danger imminent. Nonviolent bodyguard protocols activated. I'm going to cast a uh, major image. And it's going to look like an adult white dragon just flying down and landing right here. There's the sound and everything. It seems real. Except for it can't do any damage. <laughs> oh, what? Dang. So this would be a sizable dragon, but it needs to fit within a 20-foot cube. How big is a 20-foot cube? What is that? 20-foot on a side or 20-foot? 20-foot on a side. Okay, so... so could be bigger than these mammoths. Um, <laughs> okay. Just so, to kind of scare the mammoths away. Yeah. <laughs> A white dragon appears amidst this herd of mammoth and uh, does what dragons do and looks fearsome. The mammoths near it scatter and in every direction the mammoths scatter. But the ones who are charging you continue to charge you. Um, maybe we should have just opened with the dragon that might have been easier <laughs> well, I'll just well end my turn okay and the uh, group of mammoth continue rushing forward and uh, as they do um, the group of them here overtake you and they're trampling as a herd right now, uh, running all together. And I'm afraid you all kind of stayed near the cart, right? I stayed on the cart. I stayed on okay. the cart. Yeah, I, was, I was still on the cart, too, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and that's fine. That's a fine place to be. And... Um, the mammoths come charging down the rail yard as they approach the mastiff. One of them rears up and is kind of thrown off, uh, halted uh, by these dogs who, as the mammoth rears up and the dragon is behind them, they take off into the distance, uh, fleeing far south and um, just running away, tearing off. Hey. Nice job, uh, team. That, those were the main measures taken against the mammoth, right? Yeah, and then the yep. Eldritch, the Eldritch Blast as well. And um, some of these mammoth, not liking uh, being affected by magic in such a way and forcibly moved, uh, look confused. And they've been separated from this kind of like pack mentality that is driving the other ones forward. And they um, <clears throat> wander off uh, or 
just kind of bewilderedly uh, moved to the side, uh, eyeing the small pack of dogs. But the group of mammoth is upon you, and uh, two of them, as they run past, uh, try to gore you, Jules. Uh, one crit. And the next is a 29. Uh, those both miss. Sorry. Okay. And, <laughs> oh, so for the first hit, take 47 <sighs> damage. Okay. And then take 26. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm down. That's, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had four hit points after the first attack. <laughs> the card is smashed beneath you, Jules. And the two mammoth continue on, passing the group of you. Um, <laughs> Jules turns around and goes, Hey guys, the massive thing! <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Um, another one approaches Mr. Misfit. There you sit on the cart, ready. I react with shield. Is that... Can... Bruh. Nice. Um, a 21 to hit. That'll hit me still. Oh, okay. Damn. And you will take I 31 am, damage. I am inactive. What are, how, what are your hit points? 30. <laughs> what level are you? I am a wizard. Are you? Oh, that makes oh, sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh no. That makes all the sense in the world. I'm a oh, wizard, no. Barry. And I was Mordecai. just about to be like, what are you, a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> Another mammoth runs past you, goring you as it runs. They've uh, been stirred into a frenzy as they charged, and also fearing the dragon that has been summoned behind them. Uh, 19 oh, is to it hit. on now? Yeah, that's going to hit. Oh, the dragon disappears. Okay, thank you. That's a good good point. I'm the, I All think right. they'd still be have been startled by the first sight of it, and now it's kind of like in their rear view, though, so um, they might not be aware of that. So take 17 damage. I am still up. Okay. And um. as another mammoth passes, uh, it gores okay. Yoshiruki for 28 to hit. Yoshiruki, you'll take 27 damage. I'm down. How many Wait, what? did you start with, though? Wasn't that the first time you've been hit? I didn't fully recover from the cliff. Did you roll um, hit dice to recover hit points? Yeah. I rolled two of them. Okay. I ended up with 28, but the exhaustion took me down. Well, you don't lose any hit points with exhaustion. No? No, you don't lose any hit points. You just get, suffer whatever the effect is. Well, then I'm at so one HP. It... Okay. And one hit just point. Just barely there. Hey, the one's all you need, buddy. <laughs> and as, as the groups of mammoth uh, flee and kind of join each other, you see there <clears throat> um, three large creatures standing and they have the fur of mammoths, but no tusks. And with a keener glance, you notice that these are giants standing. Two of them stumbling backwards from the side of the white dragon. Another hunch there, trembling in terror. But now the white dragon is gone, and they're looking about confused as their ambush has been thwarted. And then we'll go to the top of initiative, and uh, that will be Jules. You know, I realized right after my turn, I forgot that I have uncanny dodge, and I can half that damage with my reaction. But then the second attack would have still knocked me unconscious even, at, even after having that. So it would have not made any difference. So here comes my death save. Are my death saves at disadvantage from exhaustion? No, it's a saving throw. Thank God, that would be terrible. Oh! oh. oh. 
You were oh, saying. Okay. <laughs> That's two fails. Cool. It's all right. I'm fine. We're good. We're good. Yeah. I'll roll a 20 next because the universe has to balance. Right. It can't be bad. There's no way. I'm sorry. Reynold is with you. Um, I skipped Reynold. Um, let's see. Spells. Reynold would cast um, Healing Word on Jules. And so, Jules, you'll gain six hit points. Hey! I'm sorry, do you want to do that before your turn? Since um, I skipped Reynold, you should have had your turn. I mean, if that's what he would have done in the last round, then... then yeah, absolutely. You know, then, yeah, I guess I would I would technically be up for this. Yeah. Go ahead, please take your okay. turn. Okay. My mistake. Okay. No, no, it's okay. All right. Um, so, we've got hit with the one stampede ass are, are there any more coming towards us or they've have all been we, scattered we... in various directions the ones that were coming towards you have passed you and uh now it's almost as though these there are three giants out there uh, uh almost naked to the world huh? i'll place them and almost the mammoth are scattering in various world. directions it doesn't appear as though any more of them are headed your way Okay. What'd you say, man? Oh, <clears throat> uh, you said almost naked to the world, and then I saw the icons. <laughs> I know, right? Perfect. <laughs> In this weather. All right. Um, oh yeah. And so does it? The, so the giants are okay. I see. So they're right there next to the tracks, as we're coming through. So just to just to keep them off of us, I'm gonna go for this this guy that's right at the at the front, the ones closest to the tracks. Okay. And um, as we're as we're coming across, I'm just gonna take a a, a steady aim shot and uh, and throw a blade at him just to make sure they just to kind of keep him. What's trying the range on on that attack? Uh, it's uh sixty feet. Okay, so I have Am you guys set of... back a little ways, and your carts oh, have been smashed not, we're up. We're not up there yet. We're not up there yet. Okay. Then in that case, um... yeah, I'm sorry. Far, I needed to make the I needed to make the the map longer for you guys. You. No, no, you're good. You're good. Totally stopped far away and thwarted my whole plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're probably about 150 or so feet from these giants. They were kind of like towards the back of the okay. herd. <clears throat> and about how fast is this cart going? The cart's been smashed. Oh, so it's not going. Unfortunately, yeah. When the mammoths came through, they smashed up all the carts. Crap, we're in this. All right. Um, and we're 150 feet away? Yes. I can't get to it even if I... Okay, um... Then I am going to drink a health potion <laughs> and and just kind of gesture towards the, the giants to everybody else and and as I go, as I go do that I turn around and I'm gonna see our uh who all's down? Um just uh Mr. Misfit's lights are turned off on his eyes. He's just standing in the middle of the rubble. Mr. Misfit is down. And then, uh, but Yoshimaru, you, you still have one hit point, right? You're still standing. I'm barely clinging on. Okay. I don't know just... if I... Jules would not know whether or not a health potion is going to work on this automaton. So he's going to take one of his health potions out and just, and just sort of hand it over to... Um, um, to Yoshimaru. Yoshiruke. And Yoshiruke. Ruke. Sorry. I'm. <laughs> That's okay. Much appreciated. Too much anime. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Completely wrong show. 
I have a question um, about my character. Yes. So normally to stabilize someone who's down, you'd make a medicine check. What would you make for my character? A mechanical check, right? Some some kind. Have your arcana? I'm sure I, I can fix you I'm, up. I think it'd probably still be a medicine check by rules, but interesting, <clears throat> interesting point. Continue, Jules. Can can I as as a as a uh, part of part of one turn drink a healing potion and also take a, another one and just sort of hand it out towards um, um, Arctic Wolf? I'm I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> You want to drink some of the potion and then also... Oh, I've, I've got... No, no, I've got several. I've got two on me, so I want to drink one and just, like, ha hold the other one out towards him. I'm not administering it yes, to him or anything like that. you can just, do that. Just yep. giving it to him. Okay. So I'll do that, and then I'm going to look at the other two here, and I'm going to be like, okay, this is a magic ro This is a magic robot. I don't know anything about any of that. Mordecai, you know magic, and you seem to know gadgets, so one of y'all can figure this guy out. Oh, don't worry, I got this, guys. And I'll drink my my heal, my heal potion. Get me. Ooh, that's a pretty decent roll. Forty-four plus, so I got fourteen back off of that. And then I guess I'll use my movement to start start heading to, moving up towards these. Uh, I'll do. I'll just move thirty feet up, closer towards the uh, giants. Okay. And the small pack of mastiffs uh, jump about playing in the snow, worked into a frenzy as they feel like they're chasing off a mammoth. But I think the mammoth is just running from the side of the dragon that is mysteriously hidden now. Uh, and then yeah, let them have their fun. <laughs> next is Joel, or excuse me, Mordecai. Uh, you said we were 150 feet away from the giants? Yes, yeah, about that. Okay, I'm going to move in 30 feet closer. Okay. And I'm going to smack him around a little bit with some outer glass from 120 feet. Okay. And as I do, uh, giant is one of my languages. I have uh, giant, infernal, and draconic. So I'm going to scream at them in their language surrender and you we will show you mercy do not make me show you wrath very good and will you make an intimidation check please uh okay Yes. Would I still have advantage from the mask, like we discussed previously? I think um, you can have advantage just from the circumstances at hand. I'm not sure it would be from the mask in this situation. Okay. Um, intimidation, you said? Yes, please. And I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Devil's Own Luck on this also okay. to add another D10. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't feel very lucky today. Both of your spells do hit. You can deal awesome. damage. So that'll be 25. Okay. And, and sorry, that'll be ahead. the end of my turn. Okay. And then next is Yoshiruki. Ruke. Yoshiruki. All right. I'm going to first off just drink the healing potion that uh, Jules gave me. What is that? 44? Is that right? Yeah, 44 plus 4. Okay. So I get 14, I believe. Yep. And then I'm going to cast 
So drinking a, a potion will be your action. Ah, oh, dang. <laughs> All right, then. Um, let's see. What else can I do? If you have something that requires a bonus action, you might be able to do that. Um, other than that, probably limited for this turn. Can I move? Yes. All right, then I try and uh, move back and out of the way. Okay. And uh, that'll be my turn. Okay. And next is Mr. Misfit. The little wisps inside of me are toiling away. And they're not doing so well. An eight. Okay. And... Reynald calls out, as you do, Mordecai, threatening the giants. And I'm going to make an intimidation check with advantage from your check. Even just the situation in general. <laughs> and the uh, giants begin slowly backing up, um, walking away from... What they had hoped would be a lucrative ambush. And uh, two of them cast their mammoth furs to the ground. Despite how valuable they must be. And oh, they gross. stop they off. Didn't tan them first. Ew. They stop off towards the hills to the north. The right side of the map. Do you all pursue them? Or do you let them. Let them leave essentially. I'm staying here. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we need to to push that. Mordecai, down. Okay. <laughs> but, I can, but I can still cast spells. It's okay. This is a win. We won. I didn't even shoot one fireball. How is that a win? But indeed, the giants are dispatched. The herd of mammoth have cleared the way. The rails are before you, but the three rail carts that you brought with you have been smashed and destroyed. How about the, the, the other four Warforged that were loaded up on there? Are they busted up, or are they still there? Uh, they look a mess, but um, perhaps not beyond repair. Okay. <clears throat> So, do we go ahead and wake the rest of them up and just march them in there? I don't know what to do. Yeah, sounds Wait. good to me. Wait, we have Reynold. Would he be able to fix this part? I mean, it would take a while, probably. I mean, it was yeah, smashed. This one with these the... are smashed. I mean, I don't think I can fix Would I these. be able to? Yeah, something that would magically... Allow you to fix something? Um, something like the mend? Let's see. I think I'd power back up about now after combat, right? No. Unfortunately, I do not. Did anybody heal Mr. Misfit? I I'm mean, combat, so I don't know if I make death saving throws. I got like an all-purpose tool. If that's of any use in trying to fix them back up, I um, mean, yeah, maybe we could try some heal magic. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Reynold, uh, stabilize Mr. Reynold, Misbit. You wanna... Mr. Misbit, you can become conscious now as well. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what were you saying, Jules? Same thing that you were basically. You're good. <laughs> I was asking. I was asking Reynold to do what you just said he was doing. I mean, if we had a couple of days here, I could probably get these carts to work. Or, but I need to borrow from these rails. And I mean, Reynold looks <clears throat> at the uh, overturned cart that was moved off of the rails back a ways. So, do we have? We've got four more Warforged here. Do we have four more Moonstones? 
Do we see the, the moonstones for them as well? You seem to the have only discovered models, the, the one gemstone. The other models also aren't modified as I am. They aren't re equipped for combat. They're equipped for sales and sales only. Are they equipped to stand up and walk to where we need to get them to? That's all I need them to do, honestly. They have wheels on the bottom. We can't. As I do. We could pull them and they would be easy enough to roll on their wheels. Is there any way you can turn into a cart? That'd be very useful right now. <laughs> He's not a transformer. <laughs> Look, you just grabbed him by the legs. <laughs> well, the no, he's a real I could bend forward. I mean, <laughs> someone could sit on my back, and it, I don't think it works so well. I mean, do these things look like something we could prop up and 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 just wheel across? I mean, Listen, we playing. Um... <laughs> It doesn't seem so. They would need to be like active to, be to maintain easy, the yeah. proper uh, like rigidity for that kind of movement. Uh, you would need to haul these in some fashion. Okay. Plan B. Hear me out. Let's hide them. Continue on foot. And then we can report their location back. I mean, I mean, explain to them what happened. We got ambushed by 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 giants using mammoths. I mean, there's not much we could have done about that, you know. I mean, don't don't we have a portable hole? Uh, do we? I don't have a. I have a, a bag of holding, but they won't fit in that. Disassemble and reassemble. Oh God. Still the same amount in pounds. Oh, I say we bury them under some snow. And, you know, come back for them. I don't, I don't know what else we could do. We can't, we, we can't lug these things all the way back. Do I have any idea how much these things go for? Well, it's kind of strange because they are sentient beings. So these are like cons <laughs> conscri conscripted. Because well, um, these don't these don't have the soul. These are just the constructed the construction, right? Like the framework. Yeah. I had I'm in sure. my mind that these were similar to uh, Mr. Misbit, in the sense that they are sentient beings. The the body is more of just like a housing. All the beings live inside and function the body. If you open me up, you can see that the moonstone, it, it turned into a bunch of like little wisp things. That's kind of how I imagined it, where the soul itself is the There's levers right? that they, the crank so the gears go. It's more like employment, I think. I don't know. Separate consciousness. I don't think they can talk. You get paid? I'm not worried about it. I'm programmed for a function. I fulfill the function. Okay. The moral That's quandaries. D&D. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we got to just... <sighs> you bring up a good point. Uh, these are sentient beings it's kind of messed up to just dump them uh, yeah reynald um i know you can't we can't repair all of the cards is there enough pieces amongst them can we have a functioning cart like by picking up picking apart the pieces and maybe like a wheel from this one uh you know like you know take the least busted one and repair it with the smashed bits of the other one. I mean, what do you think, Yoshiruki? Do you, um, uh, Raynal turns to you and asks, and Yoshiruki, um, if you would make um, an intelligence check. Um, okay. If we can get one cart, 
functional. Still a, I'm still at disadvantage, right? Or yeah, we'll have to walk, but yeah, until we get a long rest, then you're gonna have that exhaustion. Okay, already. yeah. And I guess it's a six. Ugh. Or I think lesser restoration removes it too, but. Well, you could probably put something together where you could tow the uh, the Warforged, but probably take, um, you know, into the better part of tomorrow. I mean, it feels like that's really our best option, though. Yeah. I mean, we could hunt down a, a mammoth and maybe try to hitch onto that. <laughs> I mean, they'll, that'll take time, right? So that gives us a couple hours, you and me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can we can go try to catch a mammoth. I guess I don't know. Um, while they get the cart fixed. I'm not sure what we're going to... What check would I have to make to see what my character knows about mammoths? Uh, how probable them taming a, a wild mammoth would be. You'd have to roll a nature check. For the record, Jules is very much aware that this will probably not work at all, but we've got time to kill, and so he's willing to let Mordecai, you know, he, he wants to... Because maybe it works. Who knows? <laughs> I have minimal knowledge on mammoths. As far as I know, this is going to work without a hitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jules, you have the history of knowing that um, mammoths can be tamed to the sense, or in the sense that they can be herded to some degree. Because you yeah. have ma mammoth on, uh, mammoths on, on Thuld. Right, uh, right. And you're dealing with the orcs there. Yeah, they're... they're yeah, but hurting them and you know using them to pull your your cart is a whole whole different beast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what if we? We honestly, we'd probably have better. Like, like, are the mastiffs still around? Did the did the mastiffs all run off? They're all far in the distance, playing in the snow. What if we okay. strapped the? Warforged to the mammoths some way and just herded the mammoths the direction we needed them to go. Wait. You still have your patches. Yeah. Do you still have a horse patch? Yeah. Oh, I still have one too. Well, I, I don't think we need a mammoth at all. Yeah, no, it's true. These are riding horses, so they're trained. Yeah. So... Okay, pop out a couple of horses, strap them in there. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, uh, so if you guys want to work on getting getting us a functioning cart put together, um, we'll get these we'll get these horses out. We'll maybe start working with them to um, get them get them used to having the cart tied down on them and 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 pulling that and and whatnot. I mean they're 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 riding horses complete with saddlebags and everything, so they're they're at least broken you know they're at least somewhat trained um and to clarify there is the one cart that was in working condition that you all removed from the tracks uh you know just short distance back oh that one that one's still still functional yeah my apologies i meant to make that clear oh okay yeah, okay well then we don't even need to repair this we'll just take the other one yeah we don't need to waste the time with that using the one cart uh you know, the four of, or the five of you would be able to transport yourselves, but uh, to move the Warforged, you'll need to do something else. Like uh, the idea with the horses was is a good idea. You know. Okay. Yeah, or I mean, or or we could. What if we 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 get the other cart fixed? Because you guys said a couple hours you could put, or 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 into the evening we could put, piece together another one. And then we got a cart for the Warforged, a cart that. Three of us can try to squeeze into. Two of us can ride the horses, and then we can can get out of here. And then nobody has to walk. Or we just use the card that we have, and we go. We walk. We leave quicker, but we move slower. I feel like those giants are going to come back. 
Well, and I mean, we'll, you know, then you'll get to use a fireball. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Is there enough time here for a short rest while they're doing that? Yes. You can all take a short rest as you're figuring out how to go about this. Um, why don't you resolve what your plan is as well? In that case, I'm going to go ahead and use two more hit dice. Okay. So just we just need to decide, do we want to take the one cart, leave now, but move slower because because half of us are going to be walking? Or fix the other cart and travel at a faster pace, but we're going to lose a few hours in prep time. I think the overall faster traveling is probably going to, because we still got a long ways to go. So I think that maybe that, that might be the best option. Rain all degrees and uh, continues working on getting the car in working order. Okay. Seems like every um, other players don't have, you know, a, uh, nice. but, you know, it's not as though an opinion is needed. So if you guys are indifferent, then just move forward with that plan. Yeah. Oh, uh, can I ask something? Yes. Is my rope of climbing still back there and going to get it back? Yes, you can have that back. Absolutely. Okay. Neat. Oh, resting Mr. Misfit's head just like unhinges like right here. It goes back and little white wisps from the moon snare going out and grabbing like bolts out of them and repositioning them, putting them back together. Some of them grab rocks and go in there. Jules stares at this for several moments, very unnerved by it. They look like just little white puff balls with like lines for arms and legs. <clears throat> there you go. He's going to go ahead and pull the patch off of his robe and um, um, toss it onto the ground next to him. Massive uh, horse comes out with the saddle and everything. Um, Jules is going to grab the, the um, grab him, take a look at him, give him a little pet, and be like, I'm going to call you Rocco. And he's going to get up onto the horse and just sort of, mm -hmm. you know, ride, ride him around a little bit, get, get the horse used to him, you know, and... Um, and start start working working on that, getting the horses ready. Okay. Does anybody have food? I'm running low on rations. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got some rations. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. I am equipped with food dispensary or dispensary dispensing. <laughs> dispense. Oh, I'd like some so, of yours then. You're a vending machine too. <laughs> I will, oh, only I will for the basics. Like enough to survive, and like a little hole opens up on the hand that's always stuck up, and like <laughs> some gray goo fills his hand. Oh, that is. <laughs> it was going. Going. I'm gonna take just a little hunk of, of of like jerky out of my rations and just be like, "That's uh." How long has that been in there? I'm good. I just made it. That is not the answer I wanted. That's, that's, right. that's somehow worse, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so worse. That's, so that's on purpose. Okay. Well, it's the only way I can do it. I mean, you can open me up. You're not going to find any of this stuff in here. He opens this suit, and it's just mechanical parts under the suit. Well, that just opens up just another like a, It's like a plastic panel. What? Just, um. That just creates more questions. Little well, white uh, things are squirming around, turning levers and gears, and just looking up. One of them is wearing a hard hat. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull out my horse patch and just uh, do the same as uh, Jules there. How long does this horse last? It, it's oh, just, it's just it, it just exists now. Yeah, oh it just, there's just a horse now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They created life. Yeah, we've. This is the third life we've both created so far today. We've made two mastiffs apiece. Very strange. Now a horse. This horse is <laughs> is, is starting its life off a lot better than the last one I created. So. 
I don't know what happened, but I'm just picturing you like throwing the horse patch into a pool of lava or something. No, uh, uh, unleashing it in an in an armory inside of a locked armory to cause a distraction while I escaped said armory. Oh, that poor creature. Yeah, let it loose and then just gave it a big slap on the haunches and ran away as it just laid waste to this whole place, just kicking over everything. And Yoshiruke, the cart was much easier to repair than you had anticipated, and it um, is ready to go in less than an hour. All right. I All right, so I suppose... Okay, I'll use my uh, rope of climbing to just, like, secure the cart to the horse. Well, here, so I've, got, just... I've got just plain old rope. We don't need to... Don't use your good rope. I don't want you to... I got just some good old good old roll of hemp rope here. I can tie it off with that. I don't want you, I don't want you to lose track of that magic rope. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So we're just having the, the horses pull us from the carts? There's one cart that um, Yoshiruke and Reynald were able to repair, but it cannot power itself, so that would need to be pulled by the horses, as you've described. The other cart um, that had been overturned that you've discovered would still be operable, uh, so you can do as you please. I think... <clears throat> We should have like a scouting team go in that uh, functional cart. Mordecai and okay. somebody else, maybe. I'll go. I've got a pretty sure. good eye on uh, things like that. Reynolds sure. suggests that it's a lot of work pushing the cart. Maybe the scout should go forward on horseback. Okay. Do you think could, could, could I mean could he's one... not second guessing your strength? the two of you or anything like that clearly we're the strongest members of this he's just group. pointing out he won't be there <laughs> okay could one horse pull pull this card okay or do we need do we need both of them uh um, you know it's how fast you want to go if you start going too fast it might be dangerous as far as moving the cargo yeah. and pulling okay. it off the rail so it, it seems like it would be you know, a little bit slower going than if you were all focusing on just intently manpowering these carts, but it's going to be a lot faster than, than walking for sure. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's, let's just do this. Um, I've got, actually, hang on. Let me, uh, sorry. Give me one second here. I just got to double check something up to my proficiency bonus three. Okay. I'm going to set up a, um, a psychic link for, ugh, all right, fine, for the next hour. I'll do it again after that. Um, <clears throat> I can do it with up to three people, so it'll be um, um, myself plus three people. So it'll be me and Reynald and Mordecai and, um, and Yoshi, because I don't know how it'll work <laughs> on, on the, the Warforged. Jules doesn't. <laughs> he has no idea how to work with that stuff. I'm going to set up a psychic link so that we have communication through the, you know, through here. Um, let's say, let's go ahead and um, you guys start start rigging up these horses. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and go forward a little bit, um, just a little bit ahead while, while you guys are getting everything set up and just, and just scout and make sure there's no other um, ambushes or anything waiting for us uh, right up in our immediate um, front here. Does that sound? Does that sound good for everybody? Yeah. Okay. So I would like to. Um, and basically, what I'll do is I'm just going to keep going when you guys um, have everything rigged up. Like I said, we we've got a psychic link now, so you just let me know, and um, and then I'll either depending on how far out I'm at, I'll either start making my way back to you or wait for you to catch up to me and, and I'll hop on when you get there. Yeah, it works. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so I will start uh, heading out ahead and, and, and scouting. Will you make doing my rogue stuff? A survival check for me, please. Survival. Uh, 
Oh, seven. Hmm. <laughs> the uh, frozen tundra looks empty. The rail continues uh, westward. Okay. Um. Through the psychic link, I'll just tell everybody, it's like, okay, it's our immediate path seems clear so uh i think we're okay are you guys about ready to to move uh there's one thing i want to check um do we do we got the uh jackets from like the station yes can i just go ahead and put mine on absolutely yeah it's uh nicely made but simple and uh Takes all of the chill out of the air. All right. Yep. Good to go. Okay. And then the group of you venture forth, the horse pulling one of the carts, Reynold uh, powering the other one, uh, focusing uh, his strength on that. And we'll take a brief uh, break here um, from the game. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes, a, a couple minutes after the hour, 8.02. Woo. All right.
Oh, yeah, useful yeah, items, and I can use that. Add that for a hundred gold as well. So, do you think it's possible for me to use that patch to make the mongoose? Um, let's see. Well, the patch has uh, it's the one with the gemstones and stuff on it, right? There's one that's literally just like a hundred gold. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's really, I suppose, would be up to Ben how he wants to, if, if, if he'd be cool with you just using the, the 100 gold, or if you have to have the the gem, or, you know, do you have the patch that has, because there's one that has 10 gems worth 100 gold each. Yeah, I, I got both of those. Okay. Then, then I would say use pull that patch off. You got 10 gems, you know, you can use one, and then you pocket the other nine. Yeah, and you got nine more homunculus ready to go when you need them. Or perhaps so, uh, a cool reward for the end of the adventure would be all like, Mister Misfit opens up and gives him the moonstone that's worth a hundred G. <laughs> I'll down. make you. I'll make you into a very special homunculus. Or we could just do it's it right a, now, where he just goes, "I need a gemstone," and just smashes your head. <laughs> it's a tiny version of Mister Misfit, like this big, and he just like flies around with little jets that look like wings. Oh, we'll call him. We'll call him Mini Misfit. I have a negative one in strength, so I can't bash him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Ting! Ow! Dude, your strength isn't much lower than mine. Mine's just a zero modifier. That's still an improvement. <laughs> Hey, I'm as strong as a robot. When I feel zero like you guys were very surprised when a Warforged got one shot. Yeah, I was like, we got a tank in the team. This is going to work out. <laughs> I wasn't assuming tank. I just also I'm wasn't like, assuming wizard. <laughs> I'm like, this thing's probably a, uh, a barbarian or something or a fighter. Also, were we yeah. supposed to start out with anything other than starting equipment then? I'm just um, not Arctic sure Wolf, what did I have you start with? I can't recall. Was it a an uncommon and just two just like uncommon magical items, just like the okay. default stuff I would have had. Right. Okay. I think I'll just make it to where I have more AC. That's like the only thing I could think of my character would have that would That's make fine. sense. Can I uh make a Mongola servant? How long does that take? It's instant. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Shouldn't take that long. No, because it says um, the item you infuse serves as the creature's heart around which the creature's body instantly forms. Very so good. No, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar no with the spell yet. So, yeah. I wasn't right. either. I just have it. I have it pulled up because I was looking up something else for him. So. So your hum, hum, <clears throat> excuse me, homunculus is back with you, and um, the group of you have made your preparations and you've journeyed forth. The horse pulling the carts, riding the horses, manning the carts, and so forth. Um, and it will uh, become evening, and the night is cold on the frozen tundra. There is a small cluster of rocks nearby that might help to contain the heat of a fire if that is your plan. So it would be coming into evening, and this would be the time to rest if uh, you all were planning on doing that. Yeah, I think we definitely need to... I need a need long a rest. Action. Yeah, we shouldn't try to travel through this stuff by any means. <clears throat> okay. And um, when the group of you awaken... Having taken uh, whatever watches you had set out, the light of the golden dragon shines brightly, and the sky is golden with her light. The snow is cold, but the air feels comfortable. And you will set forth traveling, if that is all right with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I will, um, <clears throat> As we, once we start traveling, I'll set up another psychic link. We've got four hours on it. That's my freebie one for the day. Um, with the same the same people. Very good. I might just have my homunculus server and just chill on my shoulder. Okay. 
No, I'll just say also, I salvaged enough parts to get like some sort of half plate armor, so I have more AC. That'll be one of my items. Does that work? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> we um. I'm sorry, my my train of thought completely shut down there for a second. <laughs> uh, we got the long rest in, so that means our our exhaustion level is gone too. That's right. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. And you regain all of your um, hit dice. And expended resources like arcane recovery. Right. And so uh, you've traveled for much of the day when you see an enormous structure looming in the distance. It kind of um, <clears throat> comes into vision out of the uh, mist and clouds that uh, pervade these lands. And this is the Grotha. It stands as tall as any building you may have seen in Omnis, the capital city on Onthul that you were in earlier. Uh, but it is roughly the shape uh, of an upside-down triangle like a pyramid. And it is wide enough and large enough that buildings are built upon the top of this construct, adding to its tremendous height. And there are mountains ascending from hills... Uh, these are on the northeast of the Grafa, and flat snowy plains to the south and west. Where there are cliffs, there are walls, fortifications for villages, small communities. Um, some of these stand out in the open, fortresses with large walls to protect from the giants and dragons who still call this continent home. And you also see encampments uh, without these permanent walls. <clears throat> And I have you all maybe a mile or two off from the Grafa, which is the center of Trikeshnia, the city you are headed to. And uh, you also see these uh, encampments, and one seems to be quite large, with tents made from animal skins. Um, and as you approach Trikeshnia, as this city is called, uh, it begins to rain, and the golden sky is covered by clouds, the storm seemingly having caught up uh, with your travels. <coughs> and so again, um, if you all have seen like uh, Judge Dredd, like the mega blocks. Um, and I'm like Willy Wonka in the middle of all of them. <laughs> Um, it, it would the Grafa would rival the size of the mega blocks, but it appears as like a uh, long, extended uh, upside down pyramid. Um, and so it seems that you have reached Trikeshnia. Uh, the rail system comes to an end, and there's a station here, uh, also manned by dwarves, and uh, they welcome you. Um, what, what was the name of the the person we're taking this that we were supposed to deliver these um, the Warforge to, to? Commander Plas. Commander Plas. Um, Yoshi, you know where uh, you know where you can find this uh, commander guy, or are we do we know where we're taking these things? Yoshi Ruke, you would suspect Commander Plas would be near the Grafa. Yeah, I, f I think we should try heading towards the uh, Grafa there. He should be around there somewhere, last I recall. Okay. Um, so what do we do? What do we do with these things? So in the meantime, we can't lug them through town. Hey, you can leave them here. We watch them for you. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. And I'll... Um, I'll give them a couple of gold. Um, a little tip for them for that. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, very important that they are uh, well looked after, though. Yeah, yeah, we'll put a tarp over them. Keep them right over here. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, well, then, yeah, let's go head towards the Grotha and uh, get this sorted out. And this is a city, like many others, with... Uh, large paved roads 
and you know buildings marketplaces squares and there is one large thoroughfare that leads directly towards the Grafa from your direction uh, as though the city was built around um, this this already present uh, construct or whatever it may be I and was, so uh, the road would take you straight sorry. there <clears throat> I was built for the Grafa, right? Mr. Misfit was, if I remember correctly. Um, part of Mr. Misfit's kind of uh, directive is related to protecting the Grafa. So would I have knowledge of, like, the city layout, like a map? Um, you have been here before. Okay. I was asking because I was going to use Minor Illusion to like project a map onto a wall or a floor in front of us so we could see where we were going. I'm not sure that you would have the ability to do that. But I like the idea. <clears throat> um, as as we're, we're going through and passing by <laughs> all these little little shops and, and setups and whatnot. Um, is there anything that looks, um, anything that catches my eye, anything that looks interesting? Um, <clears throat> well, as you are walking down the street, many of the shops seem to be closed and the streets are quite busy with people. Um, it's quite crowded. Hundreds of people have taken to the street and um, they seem to be speaking excitedly to each other. So, and I'm sorry, Mitch, if you would like to try to project an image of the map, <clears throat> I would ask for an intelligence check and uh, could see how it turns out. Okay. <clears throat> or... I will. Yeah, I think intelligence would, would make sense. Basically trying to <clears throat> create this from your mind and make an image of it, right? Yeah. Okay, so it'd be from much... The data I've collected from the city so far. Right, okay. Hmm. And I think minor illusion, that's within the parameters of minor illusions, can be a visual effect too. So um, you're able to mark the major thoroughfares and some of the side alleys even that you frequented. And the way is clear, uh, especially with your map in front of you. There's <clears throat> the large road leading to the Grafa, and there seems to be uh, one leading in from each direction as your, as your uh, map shows. Uh, so like three large roads approaching this. Uh, but again, as I said, the shops uh, are mostly closed up. If you're looking for something specific, you may be able to find that. But that is what you would kind of notice uh, walking towards the center of the city. Are there uh, any of my like researchers around, perhaps? Hmm. As you near the center of the city... Um, you do recognize um, a woman approaching. She wears a vibrant green robe over a chain shirt with a long sword sheathed at her side. And the five of you are still together, I'm assuming. Just kind of taking in the yes. sights of the city. <clears throat> and uh, she speaks uh, to you, Yoshiruke. Ah, welcome back. I don't see Brahms with you. It is rather unfortunate. He didn't make it. Oh. Ah, uh, that is bad news. We've been waiting anxiously for you. The group of you, I assume. And she looks at uh, the five of you gathered. Kind of raises a, an, an eyebrow at Mr. Misbit. Didn't say Hello, anything man. about a robot. <clears throat> <laughs> May I offer you some uh, Mr. Misfit's magnificent pace? 
Only ten <laughs> copper a serving. And no, the no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> um, gentlemen, I'm Commander Plass. Uh, we were all waiting for you. Um, I'm not sure how much you were able to talk about with Commander Brahms, but he was most interested in your insights. He... And Plas looks around. Well, perhaps we can talk somewhere a bit quieter. Uh, walk with I me. Think, I think that would be a great idea. And okay. there are uh, two bridges are the main access points to the Grafa. And a wide wooden ramp leads to an opening in the side uh, of this massive structure. And at the top of the ramp, there's a bridge connecting the ramp to the structure. And... Um, Commander Plass leads you inside, and entering the air is cool and tranquil. Always branch in seemingly random directions, with some leading down or up. And Plass begins leading you down a winding hallway. The ground is dry, and the air feels dry on your throat as well. Uh, Commander Brahms was most interested in your insights, I think, as he mentioned to you. It, you did get his letter, right? Um... Well, we got a a letter from him that said that he wanted to yes, you know, discuss stuff with us, but that was yes, that was yes. about you know, no information in it though. Oh, and then you did not have a chance to speak with him. No, um we um were set up sort of framed for some some crimes. Right. Um I think they would they were trying to use this as like a fall at Patsy to cover up some shady stuff. Uh, Brahms uh, managed to to help us to escape, but unfortunately, we the escape was um, was uncovered as we were as we were getting out. Oh. And uh, Brahms he kind of sac kind of sacrificed himself to for, to allow us to get away. Uh, he is unfortunately now imprisoned and. The, the trial will happen before long before we could even get to back to him. And I don't know what's going to happen to him, honestly. It's terrible. Um, well, I know that he would want us to go on with his work here. Perhaps we can talk more about him later. I do have um, juggling, a lo juggling a lot of balls today. We have <clears throat> the mages from the school and the Chaksak have been so kind as to lend us some of their shaman and there are so many people just waiting about for this what might be a great spectacle and uh plas raises her eyebrows expectantly at uh yoshi ruke <clears throat> uh yes about the project i believe it should be functional soon yes yes we were just waiting for your return and commander brahms of course but um uh, and after descending for m several minutes, you see a doorway ahead, and two guards snap to attention. Commander Plas speaks. Miss Henrietta is out of jam, and the two guards step aside. There's a small contingent sitting at a table off to the side, playing a game of cards. And they lower their eyes back to the game as you pass through the door. See, uh, we dug out all of the dirt and rocks surrounding the Grafa so that the ground didn't hold her. Uh, just like we planned, but after we cleaned it out, we noticed these things crept in, and she shines the light of her lantern to reveal the wall. I know you haven't been down here in uh, a good spell, um, Yoshiruke, but this is what Brahms had hoped to discuss um, with your friends that you've escorted. And again, she shines the light of her lantern to reveal the wall, and you see large black tentacles, like those of a squid, <clears throat> grasping the walls of the Grafa. And whatever this is, it has a stranglehold on the Grafa. We need to remove these before we can attempt your experiment, Yoshiruke. Um, Jules, Mordecai, Reynold... Brahms said we, that you dealt with something similar below the sources in Antold. We have, yes. Yes, Ooh. it's um, 
it's tied to some sort of evil. We don't know a lot about what's going on with it. Um, <clears throat> we have seen people controlled by it, taken over by it. Um, it's like a, a parasite on them almost. Um, I mean, we can, we, we, I don't think we, we managed to actually kill any of it. Um, but we've certainly sent it retreating from some other areas previously. Um, and sort of cleanse the area of it. You know what I mean? Um, I see, so I see. We could potentially help with that. Um, but you know, this is all kind of new to us as well. So I can't make any prom. I can't promise you that if we do so, that it will stay gone forever. Right. You know, it's it's not. I we're we're still trying to figure out what all of this is too. Well, it's so strange that after we cleared away the ground, then it's these things are coming at it from the side. Coming almost. from underground. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's there's some sort of a source underneath. And um, like I said, we're not, we, I, I, we don't know much, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's definitely well, coming from underneath. I mean, we can, we can try to deal with it. Listen, but. tell me all about everything that you've learned from, uh, about these creatures. I'd like to get this, I must try something today is all I'm saying because I have so many people here and <clears throat> Perhaps um, if we have a bit of a meal, uh, you can tell me everything you know about it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, 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 I see no reason to hide anything from you. We'll share all of our experiences and all of our, you know, discoveries. And, you know, with what we've what we've dealt with with them back at the, um, I don't know what you call that place. Wherever that was, that we told at, them. at Green Acres. Green Acres, yes, yeah. And and I will too. I'll I'll tell her the whole story about you know what happened at Green Acres and how we dealt with it and and you know give her all that information. And these are the same tentacles that uh, you know took over the mind and the body of Sergug, and you battled yeah. Sergug in that way mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's that's what i was referring to when i was talking about it like like taking over like a um right you know thing yeah right yeah so I'll tell her tell her about all all of that and how how it affected him and and you know what we've seen from it and there were the bullywug that were drawn to it much in the same way that they are drawn to uh or excuse me the bullywug and the slad and the uh, slad tadpoles that were drawn to it, much in the way uh, slads are drawn to the spawning stone. And something strange was taking place in the, uh, you know, tentacle manipulating these uh, sladdy as well. And so I imagine all of this <clears throat> and whatever other details you recall of the battle and um, the strange sounds that are emitted uh, from the tentacles you relay to uh, Commander Plass. Yeah, we'll all just, just share our uh, <laughs> experiences. Mr. Mr. So, yeah, going to be staring at the wall and there's going to be like lights coming from his eyes, scanning it. And it's just me an automated voice. Um, I don't know what it would say. What? Trying to think of how a computer would type it out because that's what it would be. <laughs> I guess like accessing memory, one file found, just in an automated automated voice, and then he's just gonna go on about his business. He's scanning things, you know. That's how he knows what they are. Oh, um, did you bring the rest of this squadron? Oh yes, I'm sorry. They're they're still back at the station. Um, this one somehow managed to get himself activated on the way here. Uh, the, the stone thing sort of fell into, oh. it was weird. 
It was weird. It was like the fates had decided that he had to awaken. I don't know. It's the strangest thing. But um, uh, the other ones are are there. We we did run into some trouble with um, with the carts. Unfortunately, there was uh, um, some giants tried to to stage an ambush. Oh dear, giants! For us. This oh, close. Giants with a with a whole herd of uh, of um, uh, mammoths. How many giants? As well. Uh, it was, uh, three of them, right, guy? I think it was three. Oh. Okay. I'm going to send out, um, a group of, of warriors to take care of this. How, oh, goodness. Yes, at least 40. Uh, what, do you know what kind of giants? Uh, did we see what kind of giants they were? You might not be able to discern between different kinds of giants at this point. Um, I'm not sure that any of you have a lot of experience with them yet. <clears throat> okay. We're I'll be honest. The... I, we were we were moving quickly, and um, I'd, I'm not super familiar with giants, so... Would knowing the language change anything? anything? Um, hmm. Yeah, these look like... Um, Low, low on the totem pole giants, it would have seemed to you. Okay. Can yeah, I check? I uh, okay. Can I check like my memory to see if I know anything about them? Yes, you can uh, roll a history check if you like. All right. Ooh, nice. Seventeen. Hmm. so um, great having people with intelligence in the party again. <laughs> you know, these it giants are cost. on the front line, so to speak, or <clears throat> far enough away from, um, you know, where they should be that <clears throat> they're probably uh, weaker among the species. Foot soldiers, really... grunts, maybe a rogue group. It'd be hard to say. Yeah. It really I know is which nice. species they are. Um, <clears throat> that's all that you would recollect about it. All right. Mr. Misfit's eyes have like a loading bar going across them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Loading up those. But files. yeah, they. Yeah, so they had a they had a, a bunch of uh, mammoths like blocking the 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 tracks. Seems like they were trying to get us to stop, and oh. then they were going to unleash an ambush on us. But we managed to. Avoid that, but in the process of doing so, um, the mammoth stampeded, uh, smashed the carts to smithereens. We managed to salvage one of the carts, and then we also uh, commandeered a, an abandoned cart that we saw on the side of the tracks there. Oh, so my. we left with three. We brought one and a half back. So um, this is a, sounds but, like hill giants. I'll send about forty. Um, of our brave hill giants. To investigate. Yes, yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. It was hill, I think. I think they would have a closer kinship to the mammoth than some of the brethren, um, <clears throat> for whatever reason. Uh, we've noticed them hurting the mammoth before, so just just okay. Going then that's on a hunch those. Here. Yeah, those are those are definitely the ones then, because they did seem to, you know, this, this they were they were hurt. Like those mammoths were not there accidentally. Sure. Well, that's concerning. I do hope it's a rogue group and not, uh, you know, scouting party for Anom. I thought that Anom had left these parts, um, at least for the time being. So, well, there could be. It seemed to me like they were just scouting. setting up an ambush. I was, it doesn't seem like it was much of a scouting mission, you know? Okay. But... Well, I appreciate the heads up. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But anyway, all that to say, the, the other four uh, Warforged are. Still with the carts back at the oh. um, at the station. Right, I'll send someone uh, to paid fetch a couple, them. Paid a, yeah, paid a couple dwarves over there uh, to keep an eye on them for you. But, oh, and um, I'll get you the fee for delivery. I'll have oh, that delivered perfect. to you. <clears throat> perfect, thank you. And um, so I did want to go further, but. I would actually like to stop the adventure here for this evening. Um, <clears throat> as we get closer, I think that uh, having 
Bodhi here also will be uh, kind of key to what I have planned. So um, I appreciate everybody, you know, hanging out tonight, checking out the game. And uh, Mitch, thanks for joining us. And then if you're available next week, I'd be glad to, you know, have you back for the, uh, <clears throat> you know, part two of this uh, this session kind of. And then um, I feel Arctic like Wolf. you'll have to play a different character though, because isn't Mister Misfit being delivered? He is being delivered, but um, <laughs> Plas might have <laughs> Plas might have plans uh, for him or something in mind. And in fact, he does. Or excuse me, she. In fact, she does. Um, and uh, Arctic Wolf, of course, if you'd like to come back and play Yoshi Ruki, happy to have you. Yeah. And, Can I have um, Yoshi Ruki do one last thing? What is it? He's just gonna go ahead and just lie down and just sleep. <laughs> He's had a long <laughs> few days. <laughs> <laughs> Plus just shakes her head oh dear we need to figure this out um, no harm in letting him uh, get a bit of shut let eye. him take a nap let him take a nap here <laughs> yeah. and uh, again thanks nap. everybody and join us on our discord if you want uh, follow us on twitter mm -hmm. at the heroes mm -hmm. era um, our discord link is uh, below on this channel and you can follow us on youtube also these are being uploaded as videos on demand and you can listen to our podcast anywhere. Until next time, the adventure continues. <laughs> <laughs>